We're talking with Travis Rector here, who does some of the amazing images from NOAO and uh, Gemini Observatory. And Travis, can you tell us a little bit about how you go about putting these images together and coloring them and what your philosophy is? Okay. Uh, in the background here, we have three images that we made with the Mosaic One camera with, on the Kitt Peak National Observatory 4-meter telescope. And these images are of different objects in the sky that were taken with different kinds of filters. So, for example, M78 over here is a star-forming region where we see blue light reflected from hot stars embedded inside this dust and gas. And this object over here, this is called the bubble nebula, and what it is is this hot star right here is blowing off shells of gas as, as a, uh, from this massive star, and the ultraviolet light from the, the star is illuminating these other clouds of dust and gas around it. And this third object over here, which is called Barnard 163, this is an object called the Bach globule. And what it is, is this is a dense cloud of gas that's being illuminated uh, by hydrogen alpha emission from other stars uh, and gas surrounding it. Now, in each case of these images, these were all done with the same telescope, but we use different filters to try, try to show different interesting bits of science. So, for example, in this image right here, we use what are called narrowband filter. These are filters designed to look for specific colors of light produced by hot elements inside the nebula. And so, in this case, in this image, the blue bubble is very hot, whereas the yellow and green, and then moving out to the red, is cooler gas. So, in this image, the colors tell you information about the temperature of the gas. Now, in these other images, the colors are more representative of what your eye would see uh, when you're looking. If you were a, if you had super huge eyes and could see these faint clouds of gas uh, far away in space. So I heard you mention that there were these. Uh, you take a little bit of interest in what kind of object you're you're trying to portray when you add the color in. Can you right. can you mention that? Yeah, and in the case of each one of these objects, uh, we want to create an image that conveys the science going on in the object that we're looking at, and so we assign colors to the different filters. Uh, based upon the science inside the object. Now, so for example, in this image here, we are actually using data sets from filters that are invisible to the human eye. We're looking at infrared light. So we have to choose colors to show things that the human eye can't see. And the analogy I like to use is uh, telescopes give us superhuman vision. If we, if we could see it without a telescope, we wouldn't be spending all this money in the first place. Uh, so. In each of these objects, we have to think about what's going on. In this object, it's a hot bubble of gas. These, these shells are expanding off of it. And so we want to use color that helps convey intrinsically the science that's going on. And artists talk about when a person approaches their painting, how does, how is the artist, how does the viewer engage the artwork? How do they look at it? What parts of the image are they looking at? And what, what is the message they take away? So hopefully, with each one of these images, they can get an idea of what's going on. So, for example, hopefully people can interpret this as more energetic and dynamic than this region over here, which is physically actually the case.